I don't, I don't know how fresh my face is, but I'll, I'll take the compliment. Um, hey, thanks everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, thanks for coming out today. Um, and thanks, Alexi, for hosting IBM and, and allowing us to, uh, to sponsor this great event. I've been following um, this thriving community now for the last, I want to say almost four or five years since the emergence of Hadoop and open source uh, analytics, as I call it. Um, it's pretty exciting to see where we're at um, in the kind of in the in the uh, you know in the steps to kind of reimagine what we can do with data. Um, I don't know what's going on behind me, so I'll just keep talking. Uh, but anyways, um, it's it's pretty cool. So as Alexi mentioned, we have a lot going on at IBM. Um, we have a garage here uh, in Galvanize called the Blue Mix Garage. Um, so if you haven't uh, gone over there to see it uh, and you're around today, I encourage you to go check it out. Um, so yeah, so, so basically around this time last year, we uh, announced our investment in Apache Spark. How many of you, this light is really bright, how many of you have heard of Apache Spark before? Wow, okay, good, everyone. So internally, we've been talking like, do data scientists and data engineers really use Apache Spark, or is it more of like this low level kind of engineering thing? So it's, it's pleasing to see that it's, it's, it's being adopted. Um, how many of you would consider yourself data scientists? Wow, okay, that's a good, good amount. So it seems like the community is growing, so that's, that's awesome, good work, Alexi. Um, so as I mentioned, we, um, we announced our investment in Apache Spark last year. Um, and the way I see it is, you know, early in the 60s, um, we invested in a platform called System 360. Um, it sounds pretty dated when I say it, because I'm, you know, I wasn't alive when we did that. Um, but, but what that did for, you know, the information <clears throat> community at that time, was create a, uh, an operating system, really, for people to build um, systems and integrated systems on, right? And what's interesting is not only did that um, operating system um, create an easier way for people to essentially program um, information systems, it all also launched the whole discipline of information science. And, and what's interesting about that is that's what's actually carried us essentially up until now, I would argue, right? I mean, for the last you know, 50 years, really, and that, that's a long time, right? And so what we're seeing, you know, and then, and then what we saw was around the 90s, you know, um, people looked at, you know, uh, System 360, it was very heavy, it was a heavy system, and, and that's when Unix came on the scene, you know, across the, across the bay here in Berkeley, um, where they, you know, had the BSD license, they open sourced this system, and what was interesting is, um, you know, Linus Torvalds went over and tried to use Unix, right, himself on his own machine. Just like all of you have your own machines and want to do analytics, he looked at this, you know, large um, operating system and said, I can't use Unix, so I'm going to build my own called Linux, right, named after himself. And that became pervasive. And why did it become pervasive? You know, my hypothesis is that it became pervasive because he created a community and it was free and it was available and people started building applications. And in my mind, that's really what launched um, the, you know, the age of the internet. Um, really, it launched computer science, I would say, as a discipline. Um, up until that point, you know, that was around the time I was actually in college. Um, and I remember, you know, as I was in electrical engineering and looking across um, the street and seeing, you know, the computer science building going up at the University of Washington. So in our lifetime, right, I, we already saw computer science kind of take hold and that's, you know, no one would have imagined, you know, or I don't think Linus would have imagined, um, you know, Facebook or Twitter or Amazon or any of these, you know, companies that exist today uh, that took advantage of, of that operating system, right, um, Linux. So, you know, my thesis now is that Apache Spark is really emerging as the, you know, um, analytics operating system. Um, I use that, and I know people kind of throw throw stones at me when I say something like that because, like, oh well, an operating system follows these characteristics. Well, if you look at you know what happened with Hadoop, um, you know it it was exactly like Unix, right? It was this heavy like no one has Hadoop installed. How many of you have Hadoop installed on your laptops? <laughs> a few. Okay, so it's not a pleasurable experience, and I would argue that it's not necessarily the best use of Hadoop on a single, you know, on a laptop, right? So what happened, you know, um, essentially a bunch of, you know, smarter people than myself, Matei and others, you know, came up with Apache Spark because they looked at it as saying, you know, that's not a, a very easy, um, you know, system to program on, right? The, you know, MapReduce was, was you know, pretty painful uh, to use, right? And so... So they came up with Apache Spark, and I think a lot of the comparisons with Hadoop are, 
are fair, but it, and, they, and they tend to point to performance, but that's not really what this is about, right? What it's really about is ease of use. And that sounds like a very marketing you know, term, but I, I really believe that, and it's about data access. And so you know, last year, as I mentioned, we invested in Apache Spark because um, we needed a way, uh, frankly, internally, um, to you know, essentially standardize, if you will, or, or simplify um, the way that we build our analytic capabilities. And those range all the way up to Watson and what we're doing with Cognitive. Um, so, you know, Watson is using Spark, you know, all the way down to what we're doing, you know, in, in the open source, right, with our um, Bluemix services, like Spark as a service and these capabilities. Um, so it's pretty exciting times at IBM. Um, what was actually pretty exciting to see uh, was that, you know, there wasn't like a mandate that came from Ginny or that came from, you know, the board of directors that said, hey, you must use Spark, that's the hot thing. It was happening organically internally already. So it was actually for, so what I did when I joined IBM um, just over a year ago was I, I observed this. I said, look, this is organically, you know, growing inside of IBM. And all I did was expose that to the world. Um, I think IBM, you know, over the past 50 years has had, um, uh, has had this kind of thinking of the not built here syndrome. Um, and, that's, and that's changing. And so I'm excited because, as Alexi mentioned, we're sponsoring more um, community events like these. Um, we also launched Data Palooza last year. In fact, we just had um, an event in China. Um, we were expecting, you know, 50 people. Um, 250 people showed up, um, and these weren't like, you know, students or people just like kicking the tires. These were, you know, also data scientists, you know, PhDs, researchers. So it's really taking off. Um, we are now, I want to say, at about six Data Paloozas, um, both locally or, or domestically and internationally. Um, the next one we're having is in Denver. Um, at Galvanize in Denver, um, as well as in Tel Aviv. So, you know, back in 2011 when DJ Patel said, you know, data science is the sexiest career of our, of our time, um, I believe it. It's true. And it is, you know, the, what's different about the information age then in the 60s, and I would call the data science era or the cognitive era today, is that people are far more creative today. Um, the technology is a lot more elastic and a lot more fluid. Um, so it's really up to all of you uh, to make, you know, the most out of this time, and not just the technology, but this era where people are more open, the culture is more creative, um, and who knows, right? What's the next Facebook, you know, for data science, right? What does that application look like? Um, I don't think people really have a clear idea of what that can be yet, uh, so, so it's, it's a pretty exciting time. Um, so with that, I'm going to leave you uh, to this awesome event, 170 speakers. That's incredible. Uh, let's give a quick hand for Alexi for pulling this together. <laughs> nice work. And uh, with that, I'll bring him back, and uh, we'll get started. Thanks, Alexi. Cool.